There are a lot of expensive things that you can buy in Grand Theft Auto Online. You can buy a golden jet for $10 million. You can buy an office building for $7 million if you add on the decorations and upgrades. But there is only one vehicle that you can spend over $10 million on. And that is the Oppressor Mark II. Now, I'm a big fan of this flying motorcycle. It's got a lot of capabilities going for it. It's incredibly fast, maneuverable, and it makes missions an absolute breeze. But it does have some limitations, and obviously the price tag is one of them. In today's video, I'll be letting you know everything you're going to want to about this flying broomstick and whether or whether or not you should be spending your money on it. We are going to start today's video off by talking about how to not only purchase the Oppressor Mark II, but how to upgrade it. Purchasing the Oppressor is very easy. All you need to do is go onto your phone, scroll over to Travel and Transport, War Stock, Cash and Carry, sort by price, and right at the top is the Oppressor Mark II for $8 million. You can get the trade price for $6 million if you complete five client jobs, which I would highly suggest to do. This is only going to take you maybe an hour of work, and it's going to save you literally $2 million. So it's definitely worth the effort put in. Plus, you actually get paid a little bit for doing client jobs. So to purchase the Oppressor Mark II is very easy. Easy. As a level one, you can literally go right over to Warstock, purchase it. It's upgrading the Oppressor Mark II that makes it quite a lengthy process. Currently, we are in our nightclub, and you will notice the last level of my nightclub garage is called Terabyte Garage, and we need to own a Terabyte to upgrade the Oppressor Mark II. But you can only store the Terabyte inside of the nightclub, so we also have to own a nightclub to upgrade the Oppressor Mark II. We can actually see my Terabyte right in front of us. So first of all, you're going to go back over to your phone. You're going to go to Maze Bank, and boom. Now we are on Maze Bank foreclosures. First things first is we're going to go over to the nightclub option in front of us. There's a bunch of different nightclubs spread across the map. If you don't care about location at all, then get the cheapest one, which is $1 million. However, I would highly recommend to get the LSIA one. If you still don't care about money, it's only about $60,000 more, and it's a flat, better location. Personally, I think the two best locations are Vespucci Canals or Del Perro if you have the Maze Bank West office building. If you have the normal Maze Bank office building in the center, then get something like Mission Row or Strawberry as these are going to be right next to the main Maze Bank building. The nightclubs are pretty inexpensive, to be honest, like $1.3 million, and you don't need to purchase anything once you get the nightclub to get your hands on the terabyte. Well, actually, yes, you do. You need to purchase the terabyte, but you're not going to do that in the nightclub upgrade section. You're going to do that over at Warstock Cash and Carry, and you will see the terabyte right on the mage page. It is $1.7 million to own the terabyte, and you also need to buy the specialized workshop. Not sure how much that costs, but it's probably another $700-ish thousand dollars. So, yeah, you you're going to be spending close to probably around $4 million to get your hands on the terabyte paired with the nightclub. And then you also have to buy the Oppressor Mark II, which is another six to eight million dollars. So that right there is probably close to 12 million without even adding on the upgrade price. Once you own the terabyte, once you own the Oppressor Mark II and the nightclub, you are able to enter your terabyte and finally upgrade your oppressor. All you need to do is if you don't have the oppressor stored inside of your terabyte is fly it into the back of this vehicle and you can see my oppressor right here. Then you hop onto the oppressor and you can access the workshop. This is where you're able to put weapons, engine upgrades, and all the different things that you will obviously want. You have the choice between an explosive MG and homing missiles. Definitely go for the homing missiles. The MG is pretty useless and doesn't really do anything and it's kind of annoying to use. So, wow, that's a lot of different steps just to upgrade this singular vehicle. The only good news is that you don't need to do bunker research to upgrade the weapons on your oppressor, which is actually quite nice. Imagine you also had to own the bunker and get bunker research to get the weapons unlocked. Holy pain. So, you got that covered, at least. So if you are still steadfast on spending 10 to 12 million dollars to get your hands on an Oppressor Mark II, in today's video I'll be letting you know everything you're going to want to know about this vehicle, its capabilities, how to use the handbrake glitch and allow it to achieve a top speed of 130 miles per hour, its missiles, and everything else. So let's start off with the rocket boost. You will notice on the back it has a boost, and this is really easy to use. Literally when you let go of the gas, you can let this vehicle coast, and as you can see in the bottom of my screen, that little rocket boost 
boost meter goes up. So as long as you're not applying gas, it gives you a boost. Essentially, it's useless. The only time you're going to use this is when spawning in your oppressor and taking off. But honestly, it's really nice because let's say somebody's trying to shoot me with missiles and I've just called in my oppressor. So I'm gonna, you know, pretend like somebody's shooting missiles at me. Oh no, oh no, oh no. I run onto my oppressor. It's instantly gonna have that rocket boost and I can just launch into the air at 130 miles per hour. That's really nice because it means that you can very quickly get in the action and fight whatever is causing you trouble. It's actually incredible to be honest because of that capability. So the rocket boost is a really, really nice kind of just saving feature of the oppressor. But it's also pretty fast. You see right now I'm just pressing full speed on the accelerator. And as we can see, the speedo says I'm going 108 miles per hour. However, we can actually go quite a bit faster. You see, if we hold RB on my Xbox remote, which is the handbrake button, it is going to lower the fins on the front. We can see that right there. Lowering those fins on the front increases your top speed to 130 miles per hour. And as long as you hold that handbrake, the vehicle is going to stay at that speed for as long as you fly it. Now, if you let go and you pull up, it's obviously going to slow down because those fins are going to come back out. But it's really, really nice that you can fly around faster than the majority of even supercars in the game. It's, it's actually really nice. And it's one of the major reasons why I still think the Oppressor is a super good purchase. Some of the other capabilities that the Oppressor Mark II has is not dying when you crash. For example, we're going to crash full speed. That's 130 miles per hour right into that wall. Nothing happens. We can do it again. Here we are right into the pole. Okay. Apparently we just went right through the pole. Uh, great job coding there, Rockstar. Let's try again. Full speed into the building. Yeah. As we can see, it's very hard to actually get knocked off of the Oppressor. Again, very nice. Unlike a helicopter where if you make a mistake and clip a building or, you know, hit a street pole that you didn't see, that's not going to happen with this. You're not ever going to get knocked off right into this pole here. Boom. No issues whatsoever. It's really nice and it makes it uh, a lot more beginner friendly. It's also very small, so you can fit through little gaps and things that you normally wouldn't be able to get through. Obviously, with a helicopter or a jet, you have a lot of maneuverability and even a much higher top speed. The Sparrow can go 168 miles per hour which is pretty dang impressive. But you know what the Sparrow can't do? This. Yeah, I, I would like to see anybody with a jet or a helicopter do what I'm doing right now at the speed that I'm doing it. Like I'm bumping every single wall, but again, you just can't really die in the oppressor. So it's, uh, it's kind of insane what you can get away with doing. And it makes the oppressor just such a good getaway vehicle. The Oppressor Mark II is also an incredibly defensive vehicle. If I register myself as a motorcycle club president, I can instantly call my Oppressor right in front of me. If you take a look at the map just a moment ago, it was not there. That is just how easily you can call in the Oppressor Mark II. So let's say you're completing a sail mission, somebody's bothering you or bothering one of your friends while they're doing the sail mission. Well, it only takes about half a second to go into your interaction menu, call out the Oppressor Mark II and deal with whatever threat is in front of you. And if somebody does happen to shoot homing missiles at you, this vehicle does feature flares, which means you can at least distract some missiles. The problem is the flares are on a very long 15 second cooldown. So as you can see, I'm pressing the flare button. It takes a while to shoot them again. So use them very wisely. But also if you save your rocket boost, you can use that to evade missiles. The oppressor is also super small, so you can, you know, bob and weave and dodge quite easily. The major offensive capability the oppressor has is obviously the homing missiles. These are great. If you're trying to shoot somebody on the ground, you just aim the missile and boom, you blow up that motorcyclist. And we all hate motorcyclists. Look, there's another one right here. Boom. Ah, oh, we actually missed that one. But using the oppressor, it can be a little tricky, but once you get used to it, the missiles are pretty easy to guide at anything on the ground. And you just kind of dip it down at the last second, point it to where you want it to go, and uh, you deal with whatever it is. Not only that, but they're also homing missiles, so you can home on anything in the sky. And while these are the Mark I homing missiles, so they're pretty dookie, they're not going to really hit anything. But the good news is they're still homing, which means they are a deterrent. If somebody's trying to mess with you or somebody's trying to blow you up, you can spam these homing missiles over and over and over, and it will waste somebody's time. And if they're not the best pilot, or they make just one slip up, they're still good enough that they might just blow the enemy up. So the Oppressor really is just an amazing vehicle. It's got offensive capabilities. It's got defensive capabilities. I mainly use it for missions. It's the fact that it hovers in one spot and it has homing missiles, which means that you can literally blow anything up in front of you very easily when you're doing a mission and then fly back over to your office building, start the source again, and keep going. And what's even nicer is that your terabyte 
you have the master control terminal inside of your terabyte. Now, it's not as good as the one in the arcade. You're only able to steal supplies when it comes to your motorcycle club or bunker, which is honestly really annoying. If you could also purchase supplies here, it would instantly be S tier. But what you can do is air freight cargo. You can easily steal any of the supplies you want, which is really nice. It means you don't need to own a special hangar as you can do the missions wherever you are. Or you can do special cargo and you can steal crates. So if I wanted to do three crates of bullion, boom, I can do it right here. And the great thing is that when I'm doing the source, I can just hop right into my oppressor and I can start the mission up. So I will have a fully stocked oppressor and I can go wherever I want to go and go collect the bullion. It makes doing missions, especially sourcing missions, very easy, very fast. You can also put the oppressor inside of your office garage or agency garage. And whenever you do one of those missions, you can call it right out of the garage from your CEO representative. Honestly, there's only two downsides of the Oppressor Mark II. The first one, we already know, it's the price tag. 12 to 10 million dollars to get your hands on this vehicle and fully upgrade it is ridiculous. And for a new player, it's basically impossible to get your hands on unless you want to spend a hundred dollars. And even then, with a hundred dollars, you're still not going to be able to get the vehicle fully upgraded, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. The other reason why the Oppressor Mark II isn't insane is because of the fact the Sparrow exists. For example, if I go into my interaction menu, I scroll over to service vehicles, I go to Kosatka, and I press request vehicle being the Sparrow. As you can see right behind me, a helicopter has spawned in the road. Now, I will admit, as people will point out in the comments, the Sparrow does have downsides as well upsides compared to the Oppressor. I would say ease of use, the Oppressor is way easier. Helicopters are harder to fly, they're slower in acceleration, they take longer to land. I like using the Oppressor because of how easy it is just to maneuver, land immediately, and get back into the air. But for long distance trips, the Sparrow is way better as it's faster. It also features unlimited homing missiles, unlike the Oppressor, which only features around 30. So that is something you're going to have to keep in mind. The Sparrow also features more flares per salvo of four instead of two, and it's only a five second cooldown, so it's way easier to launch them. The Sparrow is easier to destroy, but here's the big advantage. The Sparrow is way cheaper. The Sparrow itself is 1.7 million. You're probably going to be spending an additional 300,000 on upgrades, so we'll put it up to $2 million. And then you have to get the Kosatka, which is another $2.2 million. The thing you need to remember is that the Kosatka also has an insane way of making money, so you'll instantly be making that money back within your first, you know, hour of playing, especially with your first time bonus doing the Kyo Perico heist. So yeah, while I do think that the Oppressor is a bit better than the Sparrow in most situations, I also don't think that I would use the Oppressor when I'm a new player, when the Sparrow is one third of the price and it comes with a purchase that allows me to earn millions of dollars back every single hour. So let me know what you guys think. I'm not here dissing on the, the oppressor. I think the oppressor is great. I just, I just, I don't know if I can be justified saying it's a good purchase when it's $12 million. If you're a new player, I would much rather recommend getting your hands on something like a Deluxo, a Toreador, and a Sparrow instead of buying a singular oppressor Mark II. But let me know if you agree with me in the comments down below or you disagree. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.